guys today I thought I'd show you how to make a faux lamp work glass pendant or focal bead whatever you want to use it for but I'm just going to be making one I have done a faux lamp work glass before but this is not doing it in the same way this is a different approach to it um, there's going to be quite a lot of um, resources that you need obviously some clay and I'll start with that um, first so I've got some Cernit translucent you don't have to use Cernit you could use Primo and I'm just gonna take a chunk like I say this is just gonna be enough um, to make one pendant so I'm just gonna need a smallish chunk like this of the trans and I've also got Cernit metallic turquoise gold and again I'm just gonna take a little chunk of that not much just a little bit I'm not being precise I've also got some Cernit metallic bronze same thing a little chunk I've also got some um, Cernit metallic violet Again, you can use any clays you want and any colours you want, but I do recommend that you use um, metallics or pearlescent clays. The, the clays that have got the mica powder in, because that's you're going to need that for the look that um, we're going for. And I've also got some Cernit metallic pearlescent. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. I don't want as much as that of that. And I've also got some Cernit metallic pink gold which I've not even opened yet so I'm just going to take some of that and that should be enough so I'm just going to move the translucent to one side I've got my colours ready again I'll just reiterate you can use any colours you want to it doesn't have to be the same as mine you'll also need an acrylic block some UV resin some liquid clay translucent liquid clay i'm going to be using some silver embossing powder again but you don't have to use embossing powder you could just use glitter that's fine and i've got some um pearl pink mica powder it's very 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 light pink um, i would have preferred white but i don't have any but it's fine and some blue mica powder again you can use any colors of mica powder as well You'll also need some sparklies, and I've got these um, flat back rhinestones in here, and um, usual tools, and a pokey tool, like a smaller, a smaller pokey tool. And now, last but not least, I've got these little resin balls. They're called resin bubbles. They're tiny, tiny little balls of hardened resin. Um, and I will leave a link in the description for all these different things that I'm using. Um, but just before I move forward, I don't think everybody knows what is meant by description. If you go onto YouTube and look at anybody's video, you'll see the title of the video tutorial. And next to that, there is a little down arrow if you click on that that opens it up and that's what they call the description box and in there will be all the info that I've put in there links to things and whatnot um, so that's what is meant by description for those that don't know because I'm still getting asked well where do you get this from where did I buy that I will link everything in that description box all right so moving on then um, the basis of this um, lamp work pendant is going to be a, lent a lentil swirl bead um, now I'm not scientific when it comes to stuff like this but I have watched Anna Belchi do a tutorial purely on these kind of beads and she does she shows you four or five different ways that you can do them so if you want a more technical approach to how they're done you can go and watch her video and again I will leave a link in the description for that um, but that's our starting point for the bead the pendant that I want to work on so 
So I'm going to get my colours first of all and they're just all going to get chopped up together. This is not chippy choppy guys, this is just, well it is chopping but it's not going to be a chippy choppy pendant. So I'm just going to cut all these colours up, fairly small chunks and they're all going to get tumbled together so it is just a case of chippy chopping all the way through. try and get the colours distributed throughout just by giving them a little tumble and if it still looks too chunky then you can chop again. Like so. So you've just got a big massive lump together colour like this and that's as easy as that and I'm just going to collect it all together and form it into a ball. Just pick up those little bits. So just give it a squeeze and then just roll it into a ball. make sure it's nicely conditioned and soft until you've got a nice ball like this okay next thing is we want to make a similar size ball in the trans um, but before we do that let me just give my hands a wipe I'm transferring color over onto it Before we do that, I'm just going to give it a quick roll and I'm just going to throw on some of that silver embossing powder. I don't want a great deal and like I say, you can use um, glitter and you don't have to use silver, you could use gold, whatever colour you want guys. So I'm just kind of pushing that in there and I'm just going to roll it up squeeze it together, pick up any excess like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the pasta machine just to get that embossing powder all um, distributed nicely through the clay. So I'm going to go and do that. Actually I'll just stay on camera for that because it'll only take a minute, won't it? So I'm just going to roll it through a few times just to distribute that embossing powder. Oops, dropped my handle and there it is and then we're just going to ball this up and it's got to be close to the same size as the coloured ball so if it isn't quite big enough then you can um, add a little bit more clay or if it's too big you can just cut some away and that's slightly bigger than that so I'm just going to take a little bit away it's no big deal and here comes Tipsy again crying at me all right so when you've got two approximately same size balls um, you need to take one of them and cut it in half and then just put the other half to one side same with the trans clay cut it in half and then join the two halves together because I'm doing a two a two toned uh, lentil bead if you will. Like I say Annabelle she does um, a really good tutorial and she shows you all different ways to do it. I'm doing it this way. Um, obviously you've still got the two halves left over and you can make another one but I'm just going to show you one on camera. Once you've got the two halves put together you just need to give it a quick roll just to make sure they're nicely stuck together like so. So you've got trans on one side, colour on the on the other, lay it down so that the line, I'm going to go this side actually, the line is running through the middle so you've got trans on one side, colour on the other 
and this is where your block comes into play because we want to get this into a nice swirl so just place it on the ball like this and then just start to rotate fairly firm pressure and you always want to go in the same direction don't change it up up halfway you always need to go the same way and I'm just going to roll and kind of slightly tilt as I roll and I'm trying to get what Annabelle she calls that bicone shape and this is easier with um, smaller amounts of clay but I wanted it to be a fairly big pendant so and it does kind of get away with you and you have to like drag it back it's like where are you going get back over here so I'm just doing that swirly swirl <laughs> it keeps running away and I'm just going to keep going round and round and round and round and round until I get that kind of bicone look like I say it's easier with um, smaller amounts of clay so I'm, it's taking its time but we're getting there so you can you see it's starting to form into a bicone? So it's like coned on both sides. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Until I've got that bicone quite a bit taller, so to speak. And if you kind of roll and tilt at the same time, that helps it along a little bit. So now you can see it's really quite pointy now, <clears throat> but I'm not done. You just keep going until you're happy with the amount of swirl that you've got. So I'm just going to keep doing this for a little bit longer. And it makes my fingers ache actually. And these do take a little bit of practice, so don't panic if it doesn't work out. All you've got to do is get it, reball it and start again. Nothing lost. Of course, I don't want to do that because I want to keep one side colour, one side trans, but um, you could still end up making a nice bead if you had to and ball it back up and redo it. It still looks, it still looks beautiful. So no loss, no worries. So I'm just going to keep doing that for a little bit longer. Always trying to keep it in that bicone shape. I hope this makes sense, but like I say, Annabelle Chi has got a whole tutorial on them. So you could watch hers first if you wanted to. All right, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to start to slow it down a little bit make the circle movements wider as I go down slowly and gently and then give it a little squash not much just very gentle pressure so you flattened it out a little bit okay and of course you're going to have a pattern on the other side as well so you can take your pick which side you like best all right so that's that <coughs> excuse me and I'm just going to give it a quick wipe just to clean it up a little bit and that's all there is to it for this stage guys so I'm just going to go and put that in the oven I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes to an hour because I want a full cure on it and it is quite thick alright so probably an hour um, once it's baked I will be back alright guys this is out of the oven it's fully cured and this is what it looks like currently pretty nice so now it's just a case of um, making it look more like lamp work so I'm just going to take a tiny little bit let me just get a tile a tiny little bit of resin on my tile just a drop and I'm going to pick out a crystal I'm just going to use one just a little tiny crystal 
and I'm just going to take my pokey tool and I'm going to decide where I want to do this. I want to kind of leave that little spiral showing so I'm just going to drop this here pick up my crystal she says come on sometimes I can get them sometimes I can't and I can't get that one let me just grab my tweezers hee <laughs> ping oh my god gosh get on and I'm just gonna <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna plunk it on there like that right on top of that little um, drop of resin and then I'm just gonna bring over my lamp quickly my UV lamp and just um, quickly heat set it I don't have to do a full cure on it at this point so I'm just gonna give it a quick blast with the UV light so it holds the crystal in place I'm just going to wipe off my ball tool just make sure that's on there okay so that's nicely on there now so that's all you need to do just a, just a few seconds just to set it on there now the next thing I want to do once I move out my, my tire light out of the way I don't know what is wrong with me. I can't get my words out. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting some translucent um, liquid clay. And I'm just going to put a little bit on there. And then I'm going to get my mica powder, my um, pearl pink mica powder. And my scoop, if I can get it. My scoop... I'm just going to put, not much, just a little bit, and that's probably too much, just a little bit on there like that. And I'm just going to give that a mix in. I don't know how well you can see this on camera because it is a very light colour, but I'm just mixing mica powder into liquid clay and I think I'm just going to add a touch more just to make it slightly runnier just slightly come on just a little bit more I just want it a little bit runnier So once that's all mixed in, get your ball tool again. This is why I said to use a small one because you're going to kind of draw on there, on the pendant with this. I'm just going to wipe some of that mica out of the way. All right, so this is like my little flower centre. I'm going to do like a little sort of a flower. It's not really, but I guess you could say it's a flower. And I'm just going to take... Let me just lower you down a bit, guys, so you can see. I'm just going to take a blob of this on my ball tool and I'm going to do a drop at the top like this and then just bring it down into like a little teardrop shape like so. Same again here, a drop at the top and then bring it into a little teardrop shape. And same again here and bring it into a little teardrop shape that you can go over it and make it a bit bigger or a bit thicker whatever you fancy I'm just going to tidy this one up a little bit so you just give the impression of a flower I'm not going to go all the way around the crystal I'm just going to do three little ones like this Okay. Now you could do as many of those as you wanted. I'm just going to leave it as that one. And that's all there is for that stage. No, that's not true. I'm going to take some blue now. 
and I think I'm just going to mix it in with um, this so I don't have to make up another separate um, pile, not pile, um, pool, puddle. <laughs> Give that a mix back into the liquid clay. Probably too much mica powder there, but oh well. I'm just going to add a little bit more because it's a bit gloopy. Just to make it a bit runnier. Give that another mix. Like so. going to wipe that off because if I don't do it now I'll forget about it I know what I'm like and then I'm just going to take some of the blue and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing I'm going to do a blob like this and then I'm just going to bring it up into a teardrop shape I want this one to be a little bit bigger though so you're just kind of drawing it on there like so turn it around the other way it's easier And that's all there is to it. So you're just adding little embellishments here and there. Like I say, you can do whatever you want to. I'm just keeping it fairly simple. But I think I am going to add just a few little dots here. Just a, just a few. And I think that's good. So obviously this has got to go back in the oven so this can cure. I'm just going to put it in for 15 minutes. That's that's good enough. Um, you could actually cure it with a heat gun. But I'm just going to go and stick it in the oven. Alright, so I've just done a few little embellishments for now. Once these have cured, I will be back. Okay guys, I've um, baked that again just for 15 minutes. And it's nice and cured now. Now... I made an executive decision. I wasn't going to do this, but I decided I'm going to, and that is to add some embossing powder um, and just draw some little designs on there with my Distress embossing pen. Just very simple. I just thought it would give a little extra something. So this pendant is kind of time consuming because um, you've got all the different levels to it, different stages to it, but um, I think it's worth it. Maybe if you were to do them, you would make a few at a time rather than just one like I've done today. But So I'm just going to take my um, embossing pen and again I will leave um, a link to one of these in the description. I'm just trying to decide where I want to draw my design. I think I'm going to go with a little swirly in here. And then bring it out here. And I'm just doing some little spirally things. It's nothing, you know, I'm not really an artist in that sense. So I'm just doing a few spiralies on there. And I think that will do. So when you've done that, and again, you can draw any design on there that you wish. This is what's fun about this. You can make it whatever you want it want it to be so I'm just going to do that and then tap off the excess and it's just left some nice little glittery bits on there just blowing away the excess and I'm just going to move this out of the way before I knock it over because I will at some point just move that out of the way now of course this needs to be heat set so it's going to be noisy for a minute or two but I'm just going to get my heat gun and just start applying heat to that. So just hold it over the embossing powder. And just let it do its thing. And it doesn't take long and you'll see it start to melt after, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. So like those two bits are done. 
I'm just going to turn it around and do this bit. And there we go. Easy. Now, the next stage then is to get our little resin balls that I told you about. Little resin bubbles. And I'm just going to grab my tile again. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. I'm just going to grab my tile again. And um, I've got an itch on my ear. Excuse me, guys. It's really itchy. <laughs> I'm just going to take a little bit more resin. Oop! <laughs> oh my gosh, things are flying all over the place today. I've got jumping crystals and flying res resin lids, and I can't get my words out properly. And oh my goodness me! Right, what am I looking for, guys? Oh yeah, my pokey tool again, my small pokey tool. And I'm just going to bring these over, and I'm going to place them on the pendant so I'm just taking a little tiny blob of resin and I'm just gonna do that in the places I want those little bubbles to go and hopefully these should pick up fairly easy because they just stick to the resin and I'm just gonna plonk it on there like that just wherever I put a little drop of can you see that hopefully you can see that and again same thing you can put as many of these on as you want to that one doesn't want to stick for some reason get on there okay so I've just done three there and I think I'll do some more on this side so same thing, <coughs> I'm just going to blob a little bit of resin on there and they do seem to hold in place before you heat set them so it's not like they're sliding around everywhere which is a good thing. And I'm just going to go there with that one. I don't want two, but I've picked up two, so let me get rid of that, that's not going to come off. Now they're all sticking together now. Alright, what did I do? Where did it go? There we go. Just there. Alright, so yeah, I think I'm going to add a few more just around this side here. I like to do things in threes. I don't know whether you notice that, but I do tend to do things like this in threes. I don't know why it looks good. It just does. Aesthetically pleasing. And it's awkward. And just one more little one there. like so okay and that's all I'm going to do now I'm going to place this on my sticky tape and I'm just going to bring over my UV lamp again just to heat set these just for a few seconds just so they're in place so just twiddle your thumbs for a minute or tap your fingers like I do. And that should be good. Like I say, you're not doing a full cure at this point. Now, because this is domed and because it's got a lot of um, sparkly bits on it, I don't want to overload it with resin. So I'm going to actually brush it on. Now, which way? So I'm just deciding which way I wanted it. Not that it makes any difference at this point, but I'm just going to make sure that's nicely stuck on there. 
and now I'm going to get some more resin and just plop that on there whoops and I'm going to get a brush just a regular paintbrush a nice soft one and what I do is and this will keep the brush nice and soft for a long time I've had this in this aluminium foil for months and it just keeps it soft so once you've finished using resin with a brush you can just wrap it up some wrap it up in some aluminum foil and it will keep it nice and soft so you can keep re reusing it I don't know if any of you any little I don't know if any of you knew that but I'm just gonna do a very light coat of resin on this just to seal in all that embossing powder that's mainly the reason and also to bring out the colors of the metallic clays because obviously I didn't sand this yes tipsy can I help you so I'm just very gently brushing it on all over the piece including the little bits of uh, liquid clay that are on there just to bring out the shine but I'm just kind of going round the beads rather than on them and that will help them to stick in place as well even more so I'm just going to do that all the way around the piece and just be like methodical with it because I did one of these and I missed a spot and it didn't look that great so I had to go back over it so try and get every single part of the piece covered with resin and because you're brushing it on it's not going to drip everywhere like it would be if you were to pour it on like I do with a lot of my other pendants because we're just giving it a shine we're not giving it um, um, a domed resin look now you don't have to use resin you could use some Fimo gloss or something like that but this does need to be shiny because it's faux lamp work and faux lamp work is shiny although I guess there is some there are some pieces that aren't but I prefer the shiny ones anyway makes it look more glass like and you can see um, the translucent part of this kind of with the embossing powder and it almost looks like frosted glass whoops I've got that many different globs of uh, dried resin on this tile I couldn't remember which one was the the fresh resin uncured resin so I'm just going to go back over just to make sure I've covered the whole piece now I will do the back as well at some point um, you don't have to actually I might not I might just leave it as it is just sand it maybe but I'm just showing you the front guys but you could do this exact same thing on the back if you wanted to just brush it on like I say I'm just making sure every area of the piece is covered it's a little tricky to see whether it's covered or not in some areas I guess it all depends on where the light is shining but I think I've got it all okay alright so I think that's good but I am going to give it a quick run over with the lighter even though it's not a thick layer of resin I still like to do that it just eliminates any possible air bubbles so I'm going to go and cure this under the UV lamp give it a, f a full cure and once I've done that I'll be back okie dokie guys all finished and I oops see what I mean flying objects again um, I've resined it I've cured it and that's the finished piece and do you know what? I absolutely love this. I think this is probably one of my most favourite things that I've ever made. That's just my opinion, my preference. Um, I've drilled a hole 
using my handy dandy little drill, added a pinch bale um, and then added this blue organza ribbon and cord necklace and that's the finished piece guys. So there's that and I just want to show you quickly that I also made some earrings in the exact same way and I just added um, some little hoops and some beads on the hoops so there's the earrings as well I personally don't wear earrings but I still think they look amazing or you could just um, make them independent so obviously they're a bit smaller than this one but there you go guys all right so that's all for today thank you for watching and as usual i'll catch you later bye